Hi, I'm Joe Kapner here with the uh, Customer Training Education Center at GE. In today's Maintenance Minute, we're going to discuss how to remove moisture from the Gen X PS3 sensing system. We're going to use a syringe, a vacuum pump, and a heat gun method today. It's important to remove moisture to prevent sensing errors or possible loss of thrust. By following today's procedure, um, it will allow you to remove moisture from the PS3 sensing system without returning the EC for repair. Once you have gained access to the GE NX Electronic Engine Control, or the EEC, remove the P9 and P10 electrical connectors to make it easier to access the PS3 sensing line. Remove the PS3 sensing tube coupling at the EEC. Place a backup wrench on the PS3 union to ensure there is no movement or loosening of the fitting. Now we're going to remove any coarse water from the pressure port by inserting the pipette or syringe from the kit into the PS3 transducer port and operate the suction device removing any water from the port. Repeat this process as many times as needed, removing as much water as you can. Connect the vacuum extraction tool hose to the PS3 fitting and torque. Ensure you apply heat to the EEC PS3 port for 4 minutes prior to starting the vacuum and continue applying heat until the dry out procedure is complete. As a precaution, remember not to apply heat to any tubing or wiring that can melt. Additionally, once the procedure is complete, the EEC and the PS3 extraction area may be hot, so use caution. As we begin to start the dry out procedure, remember to follow your manufacturer's recommendations and instructions, keeping in mind to change out your pump oil every 50 applications. It's also a good idea to practice inspecting your kit for worn or kinked tubing prior to connection. To further explain the vacuum pump and how it works, we've connected the vacuum pump gauge to a hose that connects from the pump to the EEC PS3 port. This is for demonstration purposes only. The vacuum gauge is not part of the kit and is not required to complete this task. Prior to starting the pump, ensure both the blank off valve shown on the bottom of the pump and the pump relief valve on the top are in the open or vertical position. Turn on the pump allow it to get the operating speed. If you look at the gauge, you can see it's in the red, which means it's not pulling a vacuum. Next, we turn the pump relief valve to the closed position or horizontal position. The gauge then moves to the green side, which means it's pulling a vacuum. You can see this by the decrease in pressure on the pressure gauge. Finally, once complete, we open the vacuum relief valve back to the vertical position and turn off the pump. There's been some confusion on what the blank off valve does. When you turn to the closed or horizontal position, it isolates the pressure only to the internal system of the pump. Your gauge will show green, but it's only pulling pressure internally. As seen on the pressure gauge, there is no decrease in microns, meaning there's no vacuum being applied. Once we open the blank off valve back to the vertical position, you will see that the microns decrease again, pulling a vacuum. A good takeaway is to remember that the blanking valve always needs to be in the open or vertical position. Once again, remember using a vacuum gauge is only for demonstration purposes and not required. So now let's continue with the task. We've already applied heat to the EEC and the PS3 port area for four minutes. Now with both valves in the open or vertical position, turn on the pump. Close the vacuum relief valve to the horizontal position to create a vacuum in the PS3 port for a minimum of 20 minutes while continuing to apply heat to the EEC and the PS3 port area during this time. When finished, open the vacuum relief valve, turn off the pump and discontinue the heat gun. Disconnect the line from the EEC PS3 port. Keep in mind this area may be hot from the heat gun application. Reinstall the engine PS3 sensing tube onto the EEC. Tighten, torque, and safety wire the fitting as required. Finally, reconnect the P09, P10 electrical connectors using soft jaw pliers. This has been another episode of GE's Maintenance Minute. Thank you for all you do. We'll see you next time.